are really excited having Bobby Fam with us today. That's going to tell us a lot more about the insights and the future and the visions of KAI as the most of the community know it. Bobby, thank you so much for spending the time here with us this morning and in your afternoon. I know you've been with the company for some time and you've got some nice insights and and future prospects where we are all going. And the community of Bitcoin Trend and Forecast are really long-term holders in KAI. And, and we do see the future. I've been following it. I'm staking it as well. And I do think the future for the project as you just continue to build has got lots of legs to go. And, and we see what you guys are doing in the background. And that's the key to keep to continue to develop, have those roadmaps out and just meet them face by face. So let's get into it. Bobby, you are the CMO of, of KI. Uh, how long, uh, what was your interest in, in marketing, your experience? I've seen you studied way back then <laughs> and you've been a SEO specialist. So tell us a little bit more for, of your marketing experience and the benefits that it's going to have an impact on KAI as well. Sure, sure, yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, so I've been doing uh, uh, pretty much like marketing, digital marketing ever since 2006 when I graduated. As you mentioned, I first started in SEO and that was the majority of my career for like probably you know, 10 years. Um, and then around 2014, I made a pivot into the affiliate marketing industry, which is a subset, like a, which is another, I guess subset, if you take digital marketing as a whole, SEO is like one subset, affiliate marketing is like another subset. So I kind of pivoted over to affiliate marketing. Um, and when I pivoted over to this industry, the, you know, some of the people that I work with were doing, unbe unbeknownst to me, were doing spam. I didn't know that's what they were doing. Yeah. Like, it was weird <laughs> spam. So if you ever recall seeing like some of those, you know, emails that, you know, probably shouldn't be in your main folder, you know, that's kind of the industry I was working in. And, um, but, uh, I bring this point up because, uh, you know, working in this industry, I think some of these people are some of the brightest people I've ever met. Like, I think they know how Google works smarter, more than the actual Google engineers, how Facebook, how Facebook works more than the Facebook engineers. Um, so uh, I got into that industry because it wasn't one that I was com comfortable with. But what it did help me, uh, the reason why I bring it up is because uh, in the crypto space, as you know, it's full of, you know, spam and some bad characters as well. So this really mm -hmm. helped me prepare for me for this new industry and kind of helped me navigate, okay, I recognize what they're doing here and what they're doing. This is not a good project, things like that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that's, so that's a lot of my background, uh, um, my digital marketing background. Um, mm -hmm. And once I left the industry, I created my own uh, agency, my own digital marketing agency, which initially focused on SEO. And now we are actually moving over as a result of my new position, focusing on Web3 brands. So uh, I split my time between, you know, doing uh, my uh, managing my agency and of course here my work at Cardia Chain here, which um, there's quite a lot of overlap as well. Uh, so, yeah. so that's kind of my quick background in a nutshell in terms of my marketing experience. Now that's awesome. And I see uh, you've got your Baba Digital company that you're still presently busy with along with then Cardia Chain. So that's amazing. So when did you then start with your crypto journey? When did that all start and your investments, your first investments? How, how did that whole scenario unfold in your life? As we all really knew in cryptos from 2016, 17, that was all hype. And that's where the whole influx of a lot of members also from myself, myself um, started into this journey. So how did you find that? Yeah, I really like, you know, well, a lot of my friends, you know, that were, you know, in the spam industry, like they're always good at, you know, following the next, the next trend. And they were doing crypto, pop, like, as you mentioned, back in 2016, some as early 2015, um, you know, and then I remember everyone was talking about, all my friends were talking about in 2017, how obviously they were experiencing all these gains here. So around December 2017, it was where I rushed to create my first Coinbase account and try to buy my first couple of crypto and then 2018, around March, like all my money just you know, kind of went down and like, oh man, this, okay, this kind of sucks. <laughs> Volatile. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But anyways, um, but that's kind of when I got in. And uh, I, after I lost the majority of my first initial try, and it, um, I didn't really mess with it too much until around later 2020, I think, mid 2020, or later 2020. 
um, later 2020s when I started getting back into it here, I picked up some Rune. Um, I started, I, I got into Polkadot as an early sell and uh, nice. I, I got in some, I got some nice games from those and that kind of began my like crypto investment or crypto experience. Mm. So um, yeah, so ever since I guess then, you know, I've always, I was a casual, I guess you could call myself a casual trader, casual investor in crypto, did a couple of NFT flips, a couple of, you know, uh, token uh, public sales, pretty much all the, I guess, general crypto hustles you could say. So um, that was my experience you know, in, in crypto. I wouldn't call myself like a professional crypto trader or, any, or anything like that outside of, uh, yeah, yeah. So that was kind of my side thing until eventually I ran into Cardio yeah. Chain. How nice is that, that we can all <laughs> eventually venture into yeah. this industry full time. So you start with it as a <laughs> yeah. hobby and now we all here full time. So that's always always exciting so yeah so how did the as you mentioned then you were introduced how did the introduction work with uh, Kodaya chain uh, did you meet some of the people I know you based around that area in Vietnam where they are uh, how did that whole story unfold that you got in touch with probably the CEO or yeah so am I really yeah I, had, I met the I met Hui through a really close friend here so um, a lot of the there's a strong uh there's a strong community of Vietnamese people that they go study in the U.S., they go work at Silicon Valley, and then they come back here to Vietnam here. So that was one of my close friends, and she was really good friends with Hui, who had, at the time when I remember meeting him, he had just came back and started Cardio Chain for like maybe, I don't know, I think maybe six, seven months here. Uh, I literally, I remember meeting him over like hot pots, some random hot pot spot. Um, so, you know, we were just casually talking, and then uh, the relationship just kind of kept through that. that was like probably actually a year and a half before I actually started doing anything with Cardia Chain. Um, but yeah, so I met Hui randomly through a friend here, and then we just kind of maintained a you know a casual connection um, um, through my friend. She actually started working with them first, and then I just casually mentioned, "Hey, like, if you guys ever need help with marketing, I'd be glad to come in. You know, don't no for free. I just want to come learn what it's like to work in the industry, um, help mm -hmm. out if this turns into something. Sure, so." Um, that's that's exactly what happened. Uh, you know, I pretty much was working with them behind the scenes for about five, four months. Uh, you know, just learning the, learning how they're learning their structure, learning their structure, learning what they got behind the scenes, trying to see if there's a fit, and then eventually it turned into something a little more. Mm. Yeah, that's that's awesome because you need to be able to get the message out there, and I think that the marketing aspect of any crypto company is such a key component. And when you have someone as a specialist like you to get those niche marketing aspects, that's really important, uh, yeah, especially absolutely. when we go into the next cycles and you just want to pinpoint them down. So who founded Kodaya Chat? Was it you himself? Was it someone else? And when, when did they actually start this whole project or the vision of yeah. it? So the people that started kind of, it was actually Hui and Shri, they're good friends, they're the co-founders here. Um, they had a couple of other, I think other friends. Uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure who the other uh, other team members were involved initially, but I know these two, they, these two primarily were the, you could say were the co-founders here. Started around, I think uh, mid to late 2018 is when they started working on their project here. So yeah, Hui uh, is from Google. He spent, I think 10, 12 years at Google as one of the top, the youngest lead senior engineer I think. Oh, wow, really? Of, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, started back around late 2018. Um, I think uh, originally their original plan was trying to offer blockchain as a service. So they started trying to develop a lot of enterprise relationships here in Vietnam, um, trying to offer you know this technology to these brands here. Um, through that process, they learned about you know what it's like to try to do business here in Vietnam, which can be can be really complicated at times. Um, and that eventually led them to creating the VBA, which you know, some of you guys have made, seen, seen uh, on Wii's Twitter, which is the Vietnamese Blockchain Association. Um, so who's uh, been spending a lot of time working on that lately. Uh, but uh, anyways, back to the original question. Yeah, so Cardi Chain started back in late 2018, originally offering a blockchain as a service to enterprise brands. Uh, but from there, we've kind of grown a lot more than just that now. Yeah. And it has exactly uh, grown a lot more. So, and obviously you guys are based in, in Vietnam. Where in Vietnam is it really? Because there's a few different states or areas in Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. So we're headquartered in Ho Chi Minh, uh, Ho Chi Minh city, the capital here. Um, we have about 
oh, it's three or four offices, I think, three offices, actually. Um, and then there's another office that the tech team is building up in Hanoi, um, which is the capital of Vietnam. But yeah, so we can okay. say we're based, we're spread across both of those uh, cities for now. Yeah, so besides the core team that I've seen on the page, there's you probably a much bigger team as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, we're actually, that website is going to be changed really in the next couple of days here. So there's going to be a lot of information updated updated about that. But yeah. No, oh, nice. No, I'll surely mm -hmm. be able to follow that very soon. Okay. So what does, what sets you guys apart from other blockchains? Besides that, he's got the Google experience. <laughs> Bring me get back <laughs> home. Yeah, so I mean, that's like, uh, I think, you know, when we, when I answer this question, you know, because Truthfully, in my, in my, in my, in my, in my, from my perspective, I feel like all the blockchains are really similar. They're all really, all, all the, imp, all the other layer ones outside of Ethereum are essentially fast, cheaper, um, fast and cheaper and more and more efficient here. But I think I'll start with first the tech here. So I like to position Cardia Chain as a blockchain ecosystem. We're the leading blockchain ecosystem in Southeast Asia. Um, if you ask the Southeast Asia about any blockchain company, one of the first brands that they'll mention is likely Cardia Chain. Uh, another one would be Zilliqa aside that, but I think Cardia Chain, I think we have a really strong presence here in Southeast Asia um, and really a lot of developing regions as well. So I guess uh, first is, we're one of the leaders in Southeast Asia. If you're looking for Southeast Asian traffic or you know, Southeast Asian partners, you know, that's you know, where you can come talk to us about. You know, our core product is the blockchain itself. As everyone knows, we're a layer one interoperable blockchain. Um, we have a non-evasive approach to interoperability. Pretty much what that means is blockchains, uh, when we, uh, if you're a blockchain that you want to connect to us, we make it really easy for you to connect. To put some perspective, you know, if you want to connect to Polkadot's, uh, you know, Polkadot's, I guess, infrastructure, you have to make quite a bit of changes to try to adapt to their infrastructure and connect to their chain. You know, we have a non-invasive approach where we make it really easy for you. To, and in fact, we actually kind of connect to you, uh, actually, is a better way to describe it here. So I think that's what I would, you know, that's what's unique about our tech is we have that non-invasive approach. You can kind of think of our blockchain as like, mm -hmm you know, blockchain for small to medium business owners, if you could think of it, like if, if you want to you know, find a way to, to visualize what I'm yeah. saying, uh, whereas Polkadot is kind of for like, you know, bigger, bigger brands, enterprise brands. So, you know, that's our tech. And then we also have a lot of other core products here that we're working on here to pretty much help. When I say blockchain ecosystem, um, we want to focus on, you know, either creating or working with partners that can help develop products that help make it easier to onboard non-crypto users into the space. So one, we have the blockchain and interoperable blockchain. We have our DEX. Uh, we have a metaverse and that we're developing an open metaverse that's going to represent the Cardia Chain ecosystem. Yeah. We have a wallet, super user friendly. And then one thing yes. we're going to be experimenting with is uh, Web3 services. Uh, you know, what I found as a marketer joining you know Cardia Chain is like, obviously, as you mentioned, there's a lot of pain points in marketing. I find that a lot of people don't do marketing well, just don't know how to do it, just don't know just don't know marketing. So any service that you know we can help. Uh, so for example, like AMA is a service, hackathons is a service. Some of these other community management, some of these other other common pain points or issues that other brands have when it comes to marketing or or uh, you know business development, we want to help uh, help with that as well because we have a lot mm. of experience doing that now. Mm. No, thanks for that. And you you touch a little bit on Web three and NFTs and a little bit of a future roadmap. And I had a look on your website and I, I assume that's going to be updated as well, part of the website refresh, because I see years 2022, because as our community, we also longer term holders within this project. What is it two, three, four? Is there a roadmap more or less where you guys see the future for this in the next few years? Yeah, so actually the second half of this roadmap is going to be quite different than what you're seeing here. So um, behind the scenes, we made a lot of uh, structural changes as we created some different entities to, I, I guess I'll, put, I'll, I'll, I'll add a side note, doing business in Vietnam is a little challenging. So sometimes we have to create mm -hmm. like another entity or company to try to, uh, let's just say, accommodate some of you know, what it takes to do business here in Vietnam here. So um, what you're seeing here, the second half of it is actually some of the plans for the other entities that, that spun off. But to let you know, to give your listeners, I guess, a little uh, a sneak peek at what to expect in, in, the, 
in the upcoming year. A big focus of ours is going to be our decks here. I'm working on version three of our high decks here. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, so I think that I think it just recently launched, although, you know, there's still some bugs working out. It's still really early, but we're really placing a lot of focus and emphasis on that decks here. Our goal is to pretty much starting in, I think August or yeah, in August, we're going to have an IDO per week here. So, so this is uh, something that, you know, we're really working on a lot here. The next thing after that is going to be B-Land, which is an open metaverse uh, or a metaverse, should I say, uh, and that metaverse is going to represent Hmm. The Cardia chain ecosystem. So any business that awesome. or any token pair, anything that launches in our decks, will also have presence in that metaverse. Additionally, that metaverse, we're also going to be selling, or we actually already are selling slots to traditional businesses, particularly starting here in Vietnam. So yeah, so we have the metaverse, uh, and then after that is the wallet, and then of course then we'll be trying to offer Web three services here. But so in a nutshell here, that's really a big part of what we're working on uh, is, is the, over the next, uh, for the remainder of the year, uh, all while the while hold, the VBA is going to be a big part of that as well. I guess, yeah, now that we're on the topic of the roadmap and the, and the VBA, I should give you guys an insight to why the VBA is important. So um, as you know, this is what we learned when we were trying to do business with enterprise brands is, you know, as they, they did want to work with blockchain or crypto companies, but there was a little hesitation because of lack of clarity in, in legal framework. In fact, lack of clarity in legal framework is the, hesit- is the reason why a lot of countries or, or companies are, are reluctant to, to adopt or work with crypto or blockchain companies. Mm. So the VBA is an entity um, endorsed by the Vietnamese government to say, hey, we want to go into this space. We want to develop this tech. So let's create some legal framework around it. And that is what Hui uh, is leading. He's leading that organization there. So through that, you know, obviously that's a great partnership for Cardia Chain, a uh, great relationship. So through that, uh, through that relationship, uh, through that entity, um, first we've been getting a lot of like connection or a lot of people asking us about, you know, hey, Cardia Chain, what's Cardia Chain about? What's the VBA about? What can we do in Vietnam? And obviously that connection we hope will benefit, you know, Cardia Chain and all the things we got going on. Mm. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's very exciting. And I think you guys have got the core team, you've got the vision, you've got the right mentality and and exp- experience to really take yeah. this project to the next level where it's going to burst out of its seams in the future and take on the likes of AVAX and all those other companies. <laughs> but just to wrap it up, the last one is specifically when it comes to the technology and the statistics. Can you just do a quick breakdown of the statistics with your relative speeds on the blockchain compared to other blockchains? I think there is like um this model. There's like a little graph. Yeah, yeah. But uh, quickly here, uh, you know, we have, I think our about 10,000, we can handle up a little over 10,000 transactions per second. We've stress tested that, no problem. Uh, obviously transaction fees are like like was it like a thousandth of a cent or something like a hundredth of a cent so essentially free less than five seconds to create the block uh, i think right now we're sitting at about 500 a little over half a million users here about 47 million transactions to date so yeah that's yeah. it and then you yeah, go. you're going to include solana yeah, at a point as well <laughs> Likely, but you know they're pretty they're pretty fast too. So yeah, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. No, I think kidding. we're a little bit aver- we're a little bit faster than AVAX though. So yeah, that's yeah, awesome. No, awesome. Yeah. No, listen, it's been a real pleasure. I'm gonna say from my side quickly because I know so many of our members always want to have a look at a chart. What's the chart telling us? And just from a pure technical perspective, I've just I've re-raised the chart. I started from scratch this morning. Quickly have a look at it. So we had an upper channel here at about 15 cents, lower channel, which is at 0.11, where it's currently trading at. And if you look at the upper trends, every time when we at this lower end, it can go up to this uh, 14, 15 cents level. That's a 1,300 odd percent gain in the long term. But I do have other targets because this is a bigger consolidation period that we're in at the moment. And I do see targets of 80 cents to $11. I actually do have higher targets as well, but I'm not going to mention that just yet. Uh, I like to see certain uh, medium-term timeframes play out first before I go on further. But that's really looking promising. And I'd love for the future for us to keep in touch 
And if there's going to be any nice NFT drops or, or nice prizes that we can give away to our community, please keep in touch as well. <laughs> We'd like to be some of the first oh. and, and always, uh, yeah, because we really um, love this project. So it's been yeah, a pleasure. No. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'd love to keep the relationship. And actually, this was quite, quite enjoyable. Um, you know, I'm just learning now about your community here. So yeah, anytime we have some new stuff coming up, uh, be sure to, you know, let, I guess, uh, let you guys know, and, you know, be more than happy to come have another talk or an AMA Absolutely. or whatever to share with you guys.